Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Journey to ZA. I am your host, the Elisa Gary. And for those of you that are just joining the channel for the first time, welcome. Those of you that are returning, we appreciate you so much. We actually reached our 100th subscriber on this week, so we are thrilled. Thank you so much for all of your support. We cannot do this without you. Today, we wanted to take a little bit of time to delve a little deeper into the history of South Africa. When we first visited, we didn't actually get an opportunity to visit the historic Apartheid Museum. But today, we're going to take a little bit of time to get into the history of Apartheid and how it's affected South Africa, its culture, and the place that we are now calling home. So take a long, come along with us on this trip and we'll see what we learn along the way. We've been given a surprise in our tickets. We've been labeled either white blankets or non-white knee blankets. Am I saying that right? But apparently there's different experiences depending on if you're white or non-white. So maybe we can do both. We're going to choose non-white first. siblings within the same family were sometimes classified as members of different races with tragic consequences, with different racial classifications went separate lives. Museum 
was it was um it was breathtaking actually um if you are visiting south africa and you have an opportunity to um, go to the apartheid museum or maybe you've already relocated to south africa and you haven't quite been able to visit i would encourage you to do so um, it isn't an extremely long exhibit um, the museum is um, it's actually a little small if you want to think in terms of museum what you would think of maybe in the states however it does not leave you wanting for information in regards to um, the experience of Africans during the apartheid um, era of South Africa it also had during the time that we visited some additional um, exhibits. So there were some temporary exhibits, one that was focusing on um, previous President Mandela himself, as well as some information during his time as a young boy and his upbringing, as well as some interesting stories in regards to his father and um, kind of the folk tale of his um, loss of his sheepship, if you will. So um, there definitely was some additional, like kind of off the beaten path type of information that you wouldn't necessarily have gotten if you hadn't visited or taken the time to read the different um, pieces of information that were offered. Another thing that I really enjoyed was the stories and the additional, um, it's kind of like these show boxes that had information on descendants of those who were original settlers in Johannesburg um, around the same time as the uprising um, and apartheid within Johannesburg, understanding that Houting or City of Gold was what Joburg affectionately became known as when gold mining became a really big force within um, the province. It also displayed information about these individuals and what they're doing now, what influence their family members that preceded them had during the apartheid era, and it really gave a more rich understanding of life and meaning to that era, not just a period of time that occurred and has been done with, but showing how the acts, whether they were viewed as good or bad, impacted these people's lives and what they are subsequently doing within South Africa and abroad now. So that was really great. I think another thing that really struck me when we entered, it kind of caught me by surprise, my husband as well, we hadn't realized that on our stubs we were assigned either white or non-white. And when we went to enter the actual museum, um, we were to choose which location we went in as either white or non-white. And so we actually chose to go through, as you could see on the video, the non-white entrance. We actually went in together. Um, I guess you go to speak about us, so we weren't gonna go separate, but Oddly enough, after entering, we noticed that there are actually reclassifications that happened that determined families' fate, not just because, you know, they were black um, or, you know, non-white, but families themselves would be separated and their lives totally changed depending on if one family member was considered to be a uh, race other separate than another. That really, really shocked me. So um, it was also interesting to see that although you didn't get to see it on camera, when you go into the non-white section, it literally just takes you into the museum exhibit opening and then immediately back out into the open air space 
and you kind of have to trek through um, in the open air so that particular day we if it's raining or whatever the elements is doing that's what you're experiencing if it's cold um, but it's done in such a way that you really don't notice the difference unless you actually go back and you look and see on the white section they go in and that particular entrance ushers you directly into the main exhibit um, you don't have to go outside you don't have to experience the elements um, and again if you We have to do it again. These dogs are barking. If you don't really pay attention to it, you won't notice it, but bypass all of the atmosphere. I'm not going to do this. Start it over. Whereas if you go to the white section or white only entrance, it takes you straight in and whisks you off into a covered path that takes you directly into the main exhibit. That in itself says a lot, even though it you could miss it. And I actually didn't get to go into that specific entrance, but my husband went back to check to see, you know, what was the difference and there it was um, very indicative I'm sure of the time where you kind of you know got to the same place but to what experience did you encounter did you go through in order to get to that same place and needless to say once you experience those elements if you will of life being exposed not undercover, unsheltered, harsh sometimes. Um, you're definitely not the same when you arrive at the location that others who have had that shelter, that extra care may have been given. So definitely the Apartheid Museum did not um, disappoint. There was some awesome pieces of video where you got to hear President Mandela share stories about his childhood, things that I don't think I've come across before. Um, I'm sure maybe they're somewhere, but I particularly have not come across them in regards to different experiences he's had, things that really um, rung with him as a youth. Um, you see things from when he was preparing to be inaugurated, as well as um, behind the scenes information in regards to talks that were very um, crucial during key um, resolve during the apartheid era and ultimately disbanding of apartheid. So I would greatly encourage anybody that has not had the opportunity to visit or maybe you went and you didn't really take the time to read the information. Um, it says that if you actually do read, um, it takes about three hours to get through the entire exhibit. I want to say we arrived at about, I think it was maybe 830 and we were leaving at about quarter to 11. So that's about appropriate. Um, another good information to have, it is right next to Greenleaf, or oh, I'm sorry, not Greenleaf. Um, oh, oh my goodness, I can't even remember the name of it right now. Um, Gold Reef, that's what it is. Gold Reef Amusement Park and Hotel. So if you're going to be visiting Gold Reef, um, theme park you can actually go to the apartheid museum they share kind of the entrance parking lot um i think right now gold reef is only open on the weekend um because of the restrictions and everything that's going on and i guess maybe with cleaning and what have you so they're only open on saturday and sunday but definitely worth your while i think in u.s dollars it was maybe 12 to 18 dollars to visit um, so won't break the bank at all. 
There's some places inside that you can sit as well as some shops. And um, there's definitely walking and some steps. So if you're going to go and you're going to um, have maybe elders with you, aunties um, that may have a little bit of trouble walking, you may want to make sure you consider that and have someone to accompany them. Also, if the weather is looking a little iffy, especially in summertime, sometimes it rains. It did rain while we were there, so we had to come back and film this recap later during the day. But bring a little jacket or umbrella or something with you because as you're migrating between the different locations within the exhibits, you will have to go outside. And if it's raining, you may get wet. So again, I thoroughly enjoyed my experience at the Apartheid Museum. I'm definitely going to go back. I wanted to experience it first with my husband to take some time to read and absorb things um, without having to be mom. But we definitely plan to take our children back to allow them to absorb this information and this awesome experience for themselves. Um, I will say that it is age appropriate. There is a lot of reading. So if you're going to take, say, under 9, 10 years old children with you, um, be prepared to, you know, give them a tour. Be able to pick out different sections where you can relate the information to them. It wasn't anything that was like so grandiose that... Um, even elementary schoolers would not be able to understand, but they just would need to have somebody to explain different stories. Um, there are those palpable type things with the videos and what have you. Um, there's supposed to be an opening, like a 15 minute video or something like that, that plays in the beginning. Unfortunately, they did not have that playing during our visit and they did apologize for that. I'm not sure why, but that'd be something that I would really be looking forward to being able to see the next time that we visit. So as always, thank you so much for joining. If you are a new subscriber, we appreciate you. If this is not your first time visiting us, welcome back. Let us know what you think about this video. Of course, like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification and let us know when we are doing good. And if we're not, let us know that too. If it's something that you want us to, to cover, leave it in the comment section. We do have some upcoming videos specifically to answer some of your questions and things and experiences of ours that you guys said you're interested in. So again, I'm the Elisa Gary and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.